Good evening, this is Doc Severson for the Theonite Report for Thursday, June 8th. Looking at the sector spiders today, we had five advancing issues, seven declining, and really not much was going on with anything, with the exception of financials. So we can see this if we visualize on the financials here of the S&P 100. Financial sector here, JP Morgan, Citi, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, all of these were doing really, really well today. So on the XLF alone, what's going to what's going to goose this index here, the XLF, is if we do, in fact, start to get higher rates. And I think everybody knows there's a, what, 98% chance that the Fed's going to raise rates. However, it's really the bond market, whether or not it's going to follow suit and raise rates as well, too, usually... <laughs> The, the bond market does not wait for the Fed to do something like that. It's usually ahead of time. But right now what the bond market is saying is that rates may not raise all that much. Okay, so looking forward at this, though, we have a tremendous amount of energy here just coiled up at this. And the, this chart is doing precisely what it has to do to recover from this Mongo move that it had back here back in November, December. So it's not yet ready to break out. And this is going to take a while. Going to take a little bit more consolidation in this area. So even though everybody's getting all excited about this thing breaking out above 24, may not happen this first time around. Even though we do have a higher low, higher high, change in polarity back up to the uptrend again. Watch this 24 level on the XLF. Now a lot of these stocks that are in financials are pretty much setting up a longer term flag pattern. So a longer term flag pattern is still a bullish pattern if it breaks above this descending channel here. So descending patterns typically break to the upside. They have to. They all have to eventually go that way. So some of the stronger ones here were, of course, City. City's got a long, long way to go before it's going to run into overhead resistance or overhead supply here. So strong move today on City. That's looking good here. And then we had, of course, Morgan Stanley is kind of seeing the same thing. Morgan Stanley is almost a carbon copy of the financials. Now, I'm not much of a fundamentalist. I'm more of a technical trader, so I'm looking for patterns here. This is the TLT. And the TLT are the, uh, is the ETF of the 20-year Treasury bonds. And so what I'm seeing here is this is, for lack of a better explanation, this is really just a weekly flag pattern a bear flag, if you will. This is a weekly bear flag pattern. So what I would watch for on this chart to see whether or not rates indeed are going to start going higher would be, you know, and bonds going lower, would be a breakdown below this level here, and it could be a long way to go. Remember how fast this thing was going straight up like this in a nasty reaction to the downside could be in the works here. Is this uh, parabolic markets typically do have a very rough time on the right side of them, similar to what silver went through. So for an example, what silver went through just a few years ago and is still dealing with. So as a matter of fact, talking about silver and gold, these are in a very important inflection point right now because this can either be the beginning of a big reversal right in here Right, so we're just kind of triangling, going towards that apex here. Either this is going to break higher from here and put in a major higher low, major higher low, which could easily start to see this thing really, really move. Right, or this is just going to fall down below here and put in yet another monthly lower high. Anything could happen really at this apex. It could go either way from here. And this is uh, for not only silver but also gold is showing the same kind of same kind of pattern here right now there's a potential higher low here but this could also be a lower high setting up rolling over and destroying the gld now i know the minute that i start talking about precious metals you know, silver gold whatever or any type of commodities there is a horde of people out there that think that they know precisely where prices are going based on their interrelationships and my sense of that is that that doesn't seem to work lately because everybody's scratching their heads in today's market. So what I simply do is I follow the price. I follow the price. I don't try to predict the future. Basically what I do is I box in the areas here to say if it falls 
below this level, then it's going down. If it rises above this level, it's going up. So boxing in the price action, giving yourself a framework in which to make decisions, to me, seems to be the most objective way to trade this market and not fall into the trap of, hey, it's different this time. So just a quick look at the S&P here. Again, what we are seeing is, again, an extraordinarily strong monthly trend. Big swing, 600 points plus off of the bottom in February of 2016. So in about a year and a half, we've tacked on 600 points on the S&P. But this is coming to cost because we're now at an exhaustion point here. Typically, this is where we're going to start to see a little bit more volatility come into play. Could be. And that volatility, I believe, is not going to come in the form of some type of crash or anything like that. Not unless we have some type of exogenous event come in, which is not priced into the market currently right now. But all I'm looking for is for this to put in just a little bit bigger range in the price. Just a little bit bigger range. Now, we do have a lot of energy here at the weekly chart. So the weekly chart's ready to go, putting in a nice trend here. Unfortunately, the daily chart right now is at an exhaustion point. So this is where all these pieces kind of plug together right now. The daily chart, after a very strong move here, has gone into massive exhaustion and should be consolidating. In fact, is now for four days in a row, doing exactly what it should be doing in a very tight little range. We're going to watch for this. Again, speaking of this box here, if you will, we're going to watch for this box to be broken in either direction and simply take ourselves along with that direction not trying to predict the future just letting the price showing you which way it wants to go but also understanding what each different time frame wants what this larger time frame wants is certainly the trend is impressive but at the same time the energy exhaustion here is not something i can get past so typically when we see this happen this is where we get at least some kind of reaction from this some kind of reaction it's not the end of the world it's just non-linear price action, which goes along with what the price wants. All right, folks, that is it for today's report. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow.